Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from uh, Minneapolis Heart Institute, um, introducing Dr. Nick Lembo from uh, Columbia University, New York Presbyterian Hospital. He's going to present K67 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. Nick, thank you very much for presenting this case. Thanks, Manos. Uh, this is a clinically high-risk and anatomically complex left main patient. No disclosures. Uh, the patient's a 66-year-old female. Uh, past history of smoking and hyperlipidemia that had significant dyspnea on exertion and extreme fatigue. Uh, she was an avid tennis player, but for the last number of years has been unable to play tennis because of her severe fatigue, uh, such to the fact that she had an extensive uh, pulmonary workup that was, was normal. Uh, recently, she's been seen in found to have a five centimeter abdominal aortic aneurysm and was scheduled for repair. Uh, the vascular surgeon did a pre-op MPI that showed significant anterior lateral ischemia and was deemed high risk. And in her pre-op workup, she was found to have uh, cold agglutinins with a very high antibiotic titer with agglutination occurring at room temperature of 23 degrees. Uh, based on our MPI, she was referred to me for cardiac catheterization, and uh, this was my first shot. Uh, I tell everybody when I took this first shot, I, I cringed and was, was waiting for her to have ST segment elevation and hypotension. As you can see, there's no sternotomy wires, and uh, I actually thought I dissected the left main uh, and occluded it, but nothing happened, and, and she remained stable. Uh, so this is a uh, almost a, a flush occlusion of the very proximal segment of her left main coronary artery. <clears throat> we could see on uh, right coronary angiography, <clears throat> right had some mild uh, uh, disease in its proximal and mid portion, and then you see in this LAO projection a uh, filling of her uh, left anterior descending as well as her circumflex artery. When we uh, take it to the RAO view, you see filling of uh, a rather small circumflex, a moderate-sized ramus intermedius, and pretty much her entire LAD, as well as diagonal branches. In the um, LAO caudal shot, you could actually see connection of her uh, left main, uh, ramus, and circumflex uh, all are connected but there is a 100% occlusion uh, pretty much of the length of the left main. Here is uh, another view, a very steep LAO uh, cranial view, looking at the same thing. And uh, this, this was a, a nice shot uh, looking at it uh, from, a, from an RAO uh, cranial projection. You see that the PDA is filling the distal LAD via an apical collateral. There are some septal perforators fill, filling the uh, mid-LAD. And again, all the vessels are connected uh, at the uh, osteum of the LAD circumflex and, and left main. Uh, ventricular gram was uh, acceptable, maybe a little bit of anterior hypokinesis. And so the case summary is very high-risk MPI, a five centimeter abdominal aortic aneurysm, 100% CTO of her left main uh, with uh, LAD ramus and left circumflex filling in via right to left collaterals, a syntax score of 45, and cold agglutinins with agglutination occurring at room temperature at 23 degrees. So uh, PCI versus cabbage. Uh, in summary, uh, we went through the heart team, and uh, our CT surgical colleagues recommended a left main CTO PCI. And the reason being was that she had these cold agglutinins, and they were worried that uh, during uh, surgery uh, she would uh, have uh, agglutination, and uh, these patients sometimes wake up after surgery with strokes and ischemic limbs, and they didn't want that. I said, well, you can do her off pump. Uh, and not cool her down, and they said, they asked me if I, we thought we could do this uh, with PCI, and I said, I think we can. Uh, this would be a, a first for me, a, a total left main 
in a uh, patient uh, who was unbypassed. Uh, but they, they, they uh, were said that they would back us up if we were not successful. So what we, uh, our PCI strategy was to put left femoral ECMO in with blood warming to 38 degrees. So this way she was on, on full ECMO uh, with warming. So if we failed or we had some sort of disaster, we had the support and then they could do the operation if we, we uh, failed in our procedure. Uh, we also placed an 8 French 45 centimeter sheath on the right femoral and a right radial for retrograde injection. Uh, sent this film out to uh, a lot of different people for, for uh, opinions and basically got a bunch of different opinions and the, uh, what we ended up deciding to do is we said let's, let's use the algorithm. Uh, is there a clear proximal cap? Yes. Good distal target? Yes. Interventional collaterals? Yes. Is it a short occlusion? Less than 20 millimeters? Yes. So uh, went with the algorithm and the algorithm steered us into an anti-grade wire escalation strategy. Um, we did not want to uh, do any sort of dissection reentry uh, because we realized that if we did dissection reentry, uh, we uh, uh, could possibly lose the other vessels, and that would not be. Uh, we did not want to leave the case with a double barrel uh, uh, LAD uh, circumflex ramus system. So it was integrated with the option that we were going to get every vessel uh, true to true. Uh, so here's the uh, dual setups um, with the right radial uh, catheter, uh, the right Judkins, and a, a left uh, EBU catheter, uh, 8 French. Here is our uh, caudal view. And luckily, uh, Confianza Pro 12 was able to penetrate the cap. Exchange of Confianza Pro 12 went down the LAD. Uh, did the same thing, uh, maneuver for the ramus, uh, and then did the same thing with uh, into the true circumflex. Uh, a key point of this prior to balloon, uh, uh, with balloon inflation was to IVIS the left main. All all the wires were in the the the, the true lumen. They none of them were subintimal, and so we were fairly confident that. Uh, when we got this vessel open, we were going to have a, a nice result. Uh, this is after balloon, uh, balloon inflation, and uh, we ended up stenting into the ramus, uh, stenting into the LAD. Uh, here, the, uh, after balloon inflation, we decided uh, the circumflex was rather small, so we're going to use a two-stent stent strategy with uh, stenting into that ramus first, uh, kind of a tap procedure, and then stenting back into the left main. And then we did kissing balloons on all three limbs. We weren't uh, overly impressed with how that circumflex looked after the procedure, but it was a small vessel we did not think uh, putting in a third stent to that would be uh, a good choice. We IVIST it at the end of the procedure. Uh, you can see this, the circ distribution is rather small. Uh, it was very interesting with IVIS after the procedure. Um, the vessels looked very small, but there was not a lot of atherosclerosis distal to the stents, and we're hoping that these vessels will plump up with time. Uh, did uh, intravascular ultrasound at the end of the procedure on the left main polygon of confluence, LAD and circumflex. And we got very nice numbers. We got 14.2 uh, millimeters squared for the left main, 11.4 for the polygon of confluence, 10.2 for the LAD, and 5.3 for the uh, ostium of that ramus vessel. So. Uh, we followed this lady long term. We, were, we considered long term <coughs> DAP therapy. She had her endovascular AAA repair uh, three to six months after the procedure with no dip, uh, interruption in uh, DAP therapy. I wanted to bring her back for surveillance angiography 
at six months to see what this the vessels looked like, but she was doing so well, she turned us down, and uh, I had a hard time pushing her to do that. But she did clinically excellent uh, with this procedure. I feel this is a procedure that, uh, uh, with our skill set in uh, CTO PCI, um, we, we got a good outcome for this patient. Thank you, Nick. That's a very impressive case. Um, really enjoyed seeing that. And as you say, sometimes the algorithm, short occlusion, there is clear proximal cap. Actually, it's very gratifying that at least the crossing was the easiest part of the whole procedure, it looks like. The hardest part was the planning, the, the, the ECMO, and then putting the bifurcation standing. But phenomenal, phenomenal work over there. When you have similar CTOs with trifurcation or proximal cap, is there your usual way to try to stand one or two vessels and leave the third? Or how do you usually handle this? CTOs or non-CTOs for that matter? that you have this uh, trifurcation yeah. issue. With, 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 <clears throat> with, this, with this case, that circumflex was rather small. It was a sure. one millimeter marginal distally, and, and uh, I think three stents in that uh, uh, left main trifurcation area would have compromised something, and uh, I think a two stent strategy is probably more than enough in this patient. Sure. Okay, thank you very much for presenting this awesome case. Thank you.